Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. I think we'll go ahead and get started. And if people join us after we get started, they can uh, we can catch them up in a little bit. So wanted to thank you all for coming tonight. Um, this is the fourth meeting for Mother's Rest at Four Corners. Um, my name is Lauren Bryant, and I am the project manager for this project for Boston Parks. Before we jump into our presentation, I just want to go over a couple of quick housekeeping items with you. I um, wanted to let you know that interpretation was not requested for this meeting tonight, um, but we are very interested in always hearing all voices. So anyone um, that you know, or if you would like to request interpretation or translation services for any future meetings, um, please email me and let me know. And that is available free of charge to residents. So I'm going to put my email address in the chat for everybody. And then that way, um, if anyone wants to, to um, be able to utilize that service, um, they can email me. Deb, could we go to the next slide, please? Um, just wanted to let everybody know that the meeting is being recorded this evening um, and it'll be available on the project website within about a week or so. Um, and in case you haven't checked out the project website yet, I will put that in the chat for you guys as well once I am done um, speaking. So the um, wanted to also let you know that we know that a lot of people can't make this meeting tonight and so please do share with friends and neighbors that maybe couldn't come tonight that that, that this meeting will be on the website so that they can maybe take get a chance to take a look at it as well wanted to make sure that the conversation feels comfortable to everybody so just a few reminders um, please be respectful to everyone's time and so that everybody has an opportunity to participate and to talk um, if you've submitted one question, please let others ask questions before asking others. Um, you can always set up a separate conversation with me um, and contact me directly through my email if you wanted to chat outside of this meeting. And I know that we've all been doing a lot of Zoom meetings, but um, just as a reminder to everybody that might not be as familiar with Zoom, if you have questions during the presentation, please feel free to add them to the chat, which is the text bubble icon at the bottom of your screen. Um, you can also raise your hand at the bottom with the three dots where there's it says reactions. You can raise your hand there as well virtually. Um, and hopefully that takes care of some of our housekeeping items and I'll jump straight into the agenda, which is up right now. Um, so first wanted to um, do team introductions. And then I'm going to give you guys a bit of information about the urban forest plan, which I know we haven't talked about in this meeting yet. Then we'll do a quick project overview and a summary of what we heard at our last meeting. And then we're gonna jump into the presentation for tonight, which is gonna be um, showing you guys the progress on the design so far um, and what's changed since the last time that we talked. And then we'll go into listening and discussion like we've done at our other meetings to get feedback from you all, which is the whole reason that we're here um, to hear from the community. <clears throat> Um, so I'm, again, if anybody joined late, my name is Lauren Bryant. I am the project manager for this project for Boston Parks. Um, Christine Brandeo, who's not able to make it with us tonight, is our outreach coordinator. She's a really great resource for anything friends group, um, non-park design related. Um, she's a really good resource for that. The design team this evening, um, same as it has been throughout the project, is DMLA and who's leading that project for us is Deb Myers. So you'll hear a bit from her um, during the presentation. Next slide, please, Deb. So I know we've talked a lot about specific park um, improvements at Mother's Rest, but I did wanna make sure that everybody knew about a citywide initiative that's going on right now um, in the Parks Department, which is the Urban Forest Plan. And that's looking at our tree canopy. And I know we've talked a lot about the importance of trees and vegetation in this meeting. And I know that it's important to everybody in the neighborhood. So I wanted to just make sure that you guys know that there is a meeting, a virtual open house on March 14th at 5.30. And I'm also gonna put that link um, into the chat for everybody as well. Um, so that if anybody's interested in joining that, you can. So this just talks a little bit about some of the importance and some of the things that we're looking to do as part of the urban forest plan. 
it's not a project that I'm running, but it is through my department within parks. Next slide, please, Deb, when you have the back. Oh, even the next one. Wonderful. So here's our schedule. This should look familiar to everybody that has been um, at these meetings, but there are a bunch more dots added now. So one of the things that we wanted to talk about um, is that it's been really important to the community, and we've heard it loud and clear, that the community really wants to make sure that all the voices are heard. They want to make sure that we get this right, that we don't rush designs, and it's part of the reason why we're having a fourth meeting right now instead of a more traditional three meetings for our projects. And what we really want to do is hear from the community. So we did what we said we were going to do at our last meeting, which is to put a survey out there to try to get even more um, feedback and even more information. So what we decided to do is instead of coming back to you guys tonight with a final design, we wanted to get even more feedback. So what we're doing tonight is showing you design progress based on what we heard at the last meeting, based on what we heard in the survey, and some things we heard more definitively than others. And that's why we wanna keep getting information from you. And so we'll show you that progress tonight, take in that feedback, and then we're gonna have one final meeting where we can show that definitive design, but we really wanna make sure that we get it right for you and really hear what you guys are telling us in the community. So that's where we are right now at that March 3rd, 4th community meeting. In the spring, um, early spring, we'll have a fifth community meeting. We'll then take that and finalize the designs and put it out to bid. And the thought is that we may be in construction late summer, um, and it could be approximately a year of construction, um, bits and pieces, probably not everything at one time. But that's the basic, um, basic schedule right now. But like we said, we've been doing a lot of listening and hopefully we'll get some more feedback tonight, do more listening tonight, and then we can keep moving on with the design. But like we said, we want to get it right. Slide, please. Oh, actually, that's the end of mine. So I'm going to stop talking now. Um, and I'll hand it over to Deb, who can do some um, overview for you guys of what we've heard in the past. And also, um, we'll all obviously be here for questions throughout the process, too. So thank you all very much again for coming tonight. Thanks for the introduction, Lauren. Uh, happy to be here for our meeting tonight. Um, and as we've done in past meetings, I always like to go over what we heard uh, just to check in to make sure uh, we're getting it right and we're including your feedback as we move forward. Uh, so these images, I'm gonna have two slides that talk uh, about the feedback we received at meeting three and also um, a, bit, a bit about the survey. So these images on this slide, you'll recognize as um, images for, for the option, um, kind of option one, uh, which was the, the stair connection. So things that we heard that you liked, um, some positives um, were that it had exercise equipment, um, that there was space, uh, you know, some, enough passive lawn space uh, for exercising, for yoga, um, that people could still run up, run up the stairs and exercise with the stairs. Um, having plaza space for community collaborations, specifically um, enhancing that feature and growing that feature up on the Washington Street Terrace. Um, everyone was uh, thankful. I think that we uh, incorporated a lot of the past comments and program elements um, are included in this plan like uh, seating and tables, uh, an enhanced play area and water play. Some questions uh, and, and comments about option was, um, you know, the dog park question uh, received a lot of, a lot of comments, um, the size of the dog park, uh, potentially, you know, only being for the smaller uh, dogs. Um, swings, you know, there was no swing shown. So, so we, we, Sort of brought that back into consideration. Um, you know, could we add some rock climbing elements on the slope for dog play? Um, again, more comments or concerns about um, whether the dog park could be large enough. Um, you know, for for different types of dogs, different sizes of dogs. So the second option uh, and the, the diagrams and the image we show below showed uh, the plan that linked and connected the two terraces, both uh, Claiborne Street up to Washington Street. 
Um, so definitely the positives were creating full access uh, between uh, the two terraces, between the upper and lower. Um, a lot of people like the idea of being able to, to have an enhanced slope play off of the slides or off of the, off of the upper ramps and terraces. Um, and then absolutely, uh, you know, the ability to, to access more, more levels within the park itself. Questions and comments, um, you know, would this inhibit using the slope for, for exercise? Um, you know, can we have workout stations, climbing, et cetera? Um, some people preferred option one, um, and you can see this in the image, uh, the 3D image simula simulation to the right. You know, would the introduction of the ramps and the concrete walls and the infrastructure necessary would that impede on the green space and the natural feeling of the site itself? Um, lots of talk about, uh, could we make the ramp in different materials? Um, is an aluminum ramp a possibility? You know, rubber, all these other uh, comments on materials. Um, so we really, you know, we incorporate that into the survey questions um, and for accessibility reasons, you know, really just needed to to be concrete for, for this level of design. So taking all of that into account, um, as Lauren uh, mentioned, uh, we've developed, we've further developed the design uh, based on that feedback. Oh, next slide. And, and this is the plan where it stands uh, today. Uh, there are still things to, to talk about still. Um, uh, different equipments and uh, furnishings that we're going to show you in the next slides, but I wanted to give you uh, an update of where um, the design has has evolved. So the upper plaza on Washington Street, uh, we have expanded the upper terrace and essentially filled in some of that existing uh, grade um, change that comes uh, from the upper terrace. So we've expanded the terrace opportunity. Um, we're keeping the gate. This is the bus stop location uh, for, um, for reference. So you can see that we're really expanding the whole width of the Washington Street sidewalk to, to bleed into a terrace. We have a nice area for tables and chairs adjacent to, to SnapChef. Um, we're proposing um, some swing benches some stadium seating down to uh, in an improved uh, existing plaza um, at the same elevation that exists there today. So keeping all the infrastructure with, with the stairway, the curved stairs uh, and the walls. Um, so really uh, enhancing the ability to use that quite well and creating a nice uh, space for gathering entertainment and just viewing the sunset. Um, off the, the lower terrace, um, and we have a series of um, accessible ramps uh, to get us down to that lower uh, teen space and plaza space. We have an area, um, we're labeling it teen, uh, but we're going to talk about it, whether or not this is the space for the ping pong tables, the, the exercise equipment, um, or is it a place um, for more passive lawn space? Um, so those are questions we're still asking ourselves. On the lower terrace, uh, we have um, a new accessible ramp getting us up to that terrace level. We have vehicular and maintenance access uh, further down Claiborne Street that, that comes up the slope. We have a nice uh, circular walking path around a uh, fairly gracious lawn space. Everything in purple uh, here is um, Playground space, um, because we know how important really having a wonderful and improved playground is. So we have space for uh, the older kids, the five and up. Uh, we're saving a lot of um, existing trees here that you see rendered. Um, we have a space for the, the children, um, the more toddler age, the two to five year olds. And then where the circle uh, area is now with that lawn patch, uh, we have water play. So we're gonna show you different options um, of water play. And then our slope play um, that we're still working on. And we'll, we'll talk about some options uh, for that area as well. So the plaza space, um, some of these images are are familiar to you because we we've shown them at various meetings uh, before, and, and some are some are new areas. 
So I have numbered them um, in, in each of the slides to come. So we can either receive comments or you can uh, put them in the chat, sort of which numbers you really like, or what images you really like. Um, but we love the idea of having- uh, can I, Sorry, can I jump in really quickly? Please, please. If you guys would be willing to on each slide, put in the numbers of the items that you think really fit the character in the site. Um, if you think some of them don't, please add that too. Um, but feel free to comment if you like all of them, put all the numbers in there. Um, but that'll help us to gather feedback as we're going through some of these pictures. So please feel free to drop some information in the chat. Thank you for that, Lauren. <laughs> it's always helpful to have you here. So things like table tennis, um, you know, we have the, the Charlie table that we think uh, you know, the oval nature really fits um, the design, the, the park as we're showing it. Um, can it have an umbrella? Uh, we thought about maybe a few of the tables having umbrellas. Definitely uh, talked a lot about sort of stadium seating, uh, opportunity for, for small groups and either, and also um, just larger, larger gatherings. We've talked about painting the stairs, the opportunity for telescopes. Um, you know, can we put some colorful elements like like birdhouses in the existing tree canopies uh, because they are so wonderful? I know Lauren touched on on the urban tree plan, um, and we're really so fortunate to have so many wonderful mature trees. And then our swing benches, um, we think these could be a really fun uh, family uh, adult kind of sitting watching the sunset, uh, watching um, you know people work out. Uh, people walk, watching people um, kind of enjoy the whole park itself. Um, so I'm not listening to the chat, but I see everyone chiming in. Um, great. Well, I'm going to go to the next slide, Lauren, unless you want me to, to pause at all. Now is everybody's chance though. The last one's in for this one because the numbers are the same on the next one. So we don't want to get them confused. Yeah. And I think, you know, to, to Lauren's introduction, you know, we, the plan is really coming together. And these are the pieces that we really want your feedback on. Um, like, are there things you're not seeing that you would like in the, the plaza or um, things of that nature? Wonderful. Oh, so I see a comment and I, I'm not able to read um, quickly enough, but I, I noticed about um, the table tennis paddles and things. So we, we are um, showing a tentative location for uh, a storage unit that both either the main streets or another group could um, sort of stock and manage. Um, so I think um, even just board games or table tennis paddles, those would be great things to, to sort of store in these, this community cabinet. And to build on what Deb was just saying, that's something that Marcos um, has met with us on and is something that they're excited about too. So it's something that Parks is looking to partner with um, Four Corners Main Streets on and is something that we're going to work with them to figure out, you know, what size container, you know, what do they want to store there? Um, for some of these community events that we know that you guys have. So that's a pretty exciting thing. So I'm glad that um, somebody asked about that because it is something that we're looking at. That's great. Yeah, thank you. All right, in the spirit of respecting everyone's time, I'm gonna go to the next slide. So for this, um, exercise space. We talked a lot about all the great groups that are using the lower terrace and the upper ter terrace. So we wanted to show you ideas. Um, you know, yoga, of course, is something that can happen on the lawn. It could also happen on the terrace itself. Um, so those things are a little more flexible, but we do still uh, want to <laughs> include exercise um, pieces of equipment. So we show different uh, photographs here of different types of equipment. Um, so there's things like this cross training, um, you know, 
element that can be used in, in many different ways. We have uh, the push-ups and the, the row push-ups. There's uh, stretching pieces, balance pieces, um, uh, you know, the fit core strength piece, uh, building a lot of the upper body pieces. And then we have Compan as a company that makes um, lots of different play equipment, but they also have sort of these multifunction pieces. Um, so these are all different pieces that we could include in the park. You know, we're thinking most likely on the upper terrace, so um, or or on the lower terrace. But so those two questions about maybe what things you'd like to to see in terms of the equipment, if you think they'll be used, um, and then you know, kind of upper terrace location versus um, where you think they'll fit best. So this is a location and a, and an equipment piece. Getting some some thumbs up on all of these. Great. Yeah, these are. Um, it's just I, I'm so pleased that this park is is used in this way. You know, it's not just a playground but it's, it's a, it's a park for, for everyone. Um, so this is a great trend. So I'm glad everybody is supporting this piece. I'm sure people seem to be excited about the exercise equipment, but I haven't seen anything in the chat yet about whether people have a preference for upper or lower terraces. So don't forget to share that if you think there is a preference there. Perhaps there's not a strong feeling about location, <laughs> but that's what what is you know great about um, you know people being able to use the stairs and almost create their own circuit. Um, we also have on the playground space. You know, I've, I've, we've spent some energy kind of trying to. It's, it's not um, a long loop, um, but we do have a nice sort of figure eight, um, which isn't really a figure eight uh, for folks to, to kind of meander, meander through. Okay. Not seeing too many more comments. I am going to um, start talking about the, the play. Um, so these are uh, these slides that help us think about the elements of the play. Um, you know, play is a wonderful thing. It's something that comes really easy uh, to a lot of kids, but there are a lot of components when you're designing a playground um, that need to be considered. Uh, and you wanna also have a very balanced playground, you know, not a playground that is all physical, uh, not a playground that's all about uh, the, the social nature. So these five components, social, physical, cognitive, communication, and sensory. Um, and especially having a well-balanced of these five elements um, really creates a, a strong, cohesive um, playground that's both fun and engaging and really um, you know, gets the community coming back uh, again and again and again. So things for social emotional, um, some of these might seem uh, pretty straightforward, uh, seating, uh, table uh, areas, um, thematic elements, you know, things that really uh, could be, you know, a small uh, little hammock seat under a play structure, places for, for kids to, to, to explore and to, to think and just to interact. Physical, um, you know, things that, that move, objects like swings, uh, monkey bars, balance. I always think, um, you know, monkey bars were, were my nemesis <laughs> uh, growing up, but that certainly was something you would, uh, you know, sort of build up uh, your, both your flexibility and your, your motor skills. Um, so it's important for playgrounds to have some challenges uh, that children um, can build up to and, and gain more and more um, strength and confidence. 
sensory. This is one of my favorite uh, elements. You know, it's not just about uh, can you get across the, the monkey bars, but are there things you can touch and, and smell and listen to? Um, so I like to try to incorporate, you know, different colors, uh, things that, that spin and move, um, but also things that could make music um, and certainly creating, um, you know, places in the shade, places in the sun um, that really uh, create the whole experience. Um, cognitive and communication, um, you know, the water play is, is really huge and I, we're so excited uh, about that at this location. Uh, communication, uh, you know, things um, that people have to work together on. Um, back to the, the monkey bars, my kids always work together to help each other across the monkey. So, so look for these in the types of play equipment um, that we have coming next. Um, so a lot of these pieces that we show uh, serve many different needs, but they also have different styles and, and different themes. Um, so this board, this image board here is for uh, really geared toward the two to five-year-olds. Um, so we have toddler swings, uh, we have playhouses. Um, you know, there's uh, these mystical, uh, this company, uh, Berliner, um, you know, creates these fun, you know, with a ramp and a slide, um, again, music for the sensory, um, I love these drums. Um, so as you, um, this would be a great time to, to speak up or to chime in in the chat, um, you know, how important are swings? Do you see any of the equipment here that you like? Um, more than others. Um, you know, some of them are a little more literal with their theme. You know, we have this platform castle that has kind of big fun shapes um, versus like the Evos, which is more open. You know, it has some drums built in, uh, things that spin, balance items. Thank you, Dana. I think someone's And I think one of the questions too, when Deb's asking about swings is, we all know that swings take up a lot of square footage. And so really getting a good understanding of how important swings are in terms of the types of swings and the quantity of swings is really important to make other um, play equipment decisions too, because they do take up a lot of space in terms of safety zones. And I know swings is something that we talked about um, a lot at the past, um, past meetings. And it's a little hard when you've got a two to five year old playground, when you, or, or sorry, two to 12, whenever you have a full range of ages, because you have the toddler swings, you've got belt swings, people really get excited about the dish swings, which are for like communal use and for kids to be able to play together. And when you start adding up all the different kinds of swings, it gets to be really big. And so that's why we want to make sure that we really understand with that swing comment in the past what types of swings people are excited about and if it's just swings in general or if there are specific ages or specific types of swings people are excited about. Thanks, Lauren. And thanks, Teresa and Marilyn. That's super helpful. And once we start, you know, the next meeting we'll we'll come back to you with um, you know, definitive equipment, um, and we'll really work to make sure that all the equipment uh, works together um, so that it creates a really cohesive space. Yeah. Yeah, swings are, are great. So I didn't, um, the next picture, the next slide shows a larger kid's swing, but I did remove, and I shouldn't have, the picture of the large, um, more saucer swing. And I, I do love that. Um, and it, it is good for multiple, uh, multiple um, users. It's also really good for kids on the autism spectrum um, in terms of feeling kind of cocooned. Um, so it's really great for both communal play, but also solitary um, needs for kids on the autism spectrum too. 
So there's a question about number nine. I do not know the answer about the weight um, question, but there will be signage in the park. You know, this is um, for the for the younger kids. So there's going to be an area for kids that are over five years old, and then there's equipment shown on this um, area that's really targeted toward the smaller um, the smaller um, children. And to answer that question a little bit, I don't know what the exact weight limit is. But I do know that even though that's built for kids with body sizes, two to five year old, um, it's, it's rated for quite a bit of weight because it's in a playground that they know bigger kids are also in adjacent play equipment and play on it. And I've personally seen this piece with probably seven middle schoolers on it at one time. So I know that it does hold quite a bit, but I don't know what that limit is. Thank you, Lauren. I like your comment, Teresa, about the colorfulness. Um, and so yes, Todd, you can support you. it. What was that, Lauren? I said, yes, Todd, it will support you. You can get on it. Oh, yeah. I, um, well, I always test out all the equipment, so you'll, you'll see me spinning around. Um, so th this, this uh, grouping or this selection, um, again, is for the um, the five to 12 year old or five to, you know, 99. Um, and so again, we show different styles, you know, we have this alpha link towers that is um, sort of more of the wow factor kind of larger piece, um, the Compan supernova, um, you really have to see this in action. Uh, but this is a piece I've seen a lot of kids working together um, to get it moving, um, you know, it's good for balance, but it's also good uh, for just sitting on and, and talking around. Um, we have this sensory dome, which is um, a larger net structure with lots of different um, climbing activities, but also, um, you know, social and cognitive pieces uh, sort of within the structure. Um, the LSI number four, the beachcomber has these fun, uh, playful elements, um, you know, multiple slides, uh, you know, balancing and, and nets. And um, you can't quite see it from this picture, but a really cool um, little hammocky tunnel um, that looks um, super fun. Uh, the butterfly social is another piece, uh, kind of both metal and nets. Um, and again, just has a kind of more playful um, circular type movement to it. Um, so the Goric dish, uh, we were talking about the, the sort of swing, and I, I left the Goric dish in, which is not a swing, uh, but it is one of those uh, pieces where multiple people can, multiple kids can get on it. Um, but the, the group swing is, is nice too. Um, I showed the headdress swings here for the older kids. I, again, I'm really kind of liking these colorful uh, tube um, sculptural, but not, um, they're just, I don't know, kind of fun, fun looking. And then, you know, spinners uh, for all different ages. I love the standalone uh, hammock piece uh, for the kids. Um, checking in on the lots of voting going on with the numbers. So that's super helpful. And Deb, I do just want to chime in on one other thing. I hope this is obvious to everybody. But what we're looking at here is a combination of a structure and some individual pieces like the supernova or the dish. It wouldn't be like you get a supernova or like that really big tower. Um, so we're just looking at, you know, a combination of them, which is why we're asking for multiple. So don't think, you know, we're saying you might only get the dish. That's not where we're going with that. <laughs> Thank you for that, Lauren. And there's lots of, you know, we've had, um, you know, there's different Sort of thoughts on playground design and and this is something for you all to weigh in on we've done playgrounds that have you know like this large tower feature and then maybe a few small pieces or you have a whole design that has sort of it's more play points uh, so there's more pieces of equipment and less of sort of a large tower so but but yeah you're not you don't have to pick just one one item, we're hoping uh, to really create a nice collection um, of activities. And back to those five elements of play, um, you know, we wouldn't want just 
swings or, or just a spinning element or just a climbing element. You really want to have um, um, the, the pictures come together to create um, a really great play story. Excellent. I think I'm building up to the most fun coming up next, but I'll, I'll give people a few more moments to, to comment. I do miss meeting in person, but this chat feature is, is can be really great. <laughs> And if there's things that you um, d don't see, you know, if there's like, oh, I really love the, the play structure at, at Garvey Park or, um, you know, another one of Lauren's great neighborhood parks. <laughs> okay. So water play. Um, I am super excited about this, um, as I hope you are too. So again, you know, different options. Um, oh, Seesaw, uh, thank you, Teresa, for that. Um, so the water play, again, we have lots of numbered uh, pieces. We have um, both, uh, you know, jets that come out of the ground. We have, um, you know, spaces uh, with, with different elements. And then there's these uh, vortex silhouette pieces that, that get water higher up into the air. Um, that are also really fun. Uh, I love the, the water pump and the ability um, of a child to, 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 to generate water um, that goes into a dish. Um, we're still really looking to see if we can do this water runnel idea. Um, this is something Lauren and I talk about, I think every day this week, um, seeing how we can um, kind of- I wanna give them a little bit of a a peek of what that might be. And this is where we're saying we're trying to get everything in still, and there's a lot of really fun ideas. Um, but Deb, do you want to talk a little bit about what that might be if we can if we can yeah. make it work? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I don't know, this slide isn't maybe the the easiest, but as you as you all know, we have um, we have a slope. Uh, we have a slope um, and I guess I could go. So we have a slope. Um, which you see here in this image, um, and we'll start, you know, this is some slope ideas. Uh, but going back, let me go back. And while you're looking at that, what we're particularly looking at is on the playground side, doing using the slope as part of play, which we've talked about, and we'll look at those images in a minute. But on the water play side of the stairs, looking at how could that slope be interesting and interactive. And so this is where um, Deb is thinking about this because it could tie into the water play on the lower terrace. Does that help set that up for you? Yeah, no, it does. Um, so within that slope, um, and it, you know, we'd love to have um, sort of this pump um, or a sensor that leads to a pump so that you could create this reservoir of water that eventually overflows into a runnel and that you'd have this sequencing of water going down the slope into the water play zone. Um, you know, for me, it includes its cooperation with kids. It's the, the anticipation of what will happen, the learning of what would happen. And then, you know, what happens if we put something in the water runnel? Um, you know, I think this would be a really special feature. Um, yeah, thank you, everybody. So, um, so I'm glad you're excited about it because I think um, it's something I really want to. I think it's you know something that really uses the slope and could be something incredibly special um, and educational um, too. I know we talked at some of the early meetings about. Um, just historical aqueducts and things like that, and really how you illustrate water and slope. So, um, so stay tuned. Um, now I feel we have to really make this happen now. <laughs> um, but we're super, we're super excited about it. 
Um, and this is something that, that you don't have now, um, water play on this, in this location. So um, I think it'll definitely be a destination for, uh, for the neighborhood, um, but li likely something um, even more special than that. Not that that's not special enough. <laughs> Um, so the slope, uh, in addition to the, the water idea, um, there is an opportunity to take advantage. You know, we're really committed to keeping a lot of um, all the existing trees that are healthy, uh, but there is this um, 18 foot wide um, space adjacent to the stairs that we would, uh, that we're still considering, um, you know, with your input, of course, you know, can we put rubber surface on that? Um, you know, could we use some of these um, uh, these Euroflex balls? Um, you know, could we put climbing ropes? Um, you know, could we have a slide coming down the slope? Um, so there again, there's more more options for slope and other play, um, but that between the the both the two to five, the five to 12, the water play, and then the slope play. Um, you know, this is gonna be a really dynamic uh, play space. <laughs> the water on the slope is an issue. And um, Lauren and I, we have discussed that quite a bit as well. Um, so, Every anything we we propose will be. I see Lauren smiling. Will be super safe. Um, although you know playgrounds do you know they you know kids learning to, to climb and kids learning the monkey bars. You know they're it's not without uh, sort of risks. Um, that is part of why when we looked at it, we looked at the actual slope play, the interactive slope play of actually being on it would be on the non water side and the the play that would be on the water side was more of a watching from a distance in a runnel as opposed to having water going on rubber up and down a hill because that would be incredibly dangerous. So yeah, so it's a good point. It's something we were thinking about in terms of how could we utilize the slope on both sides of the stairwell, but keep the side on the water play and um, to, to be safe as well. Is it time for discussion? Are there any images anyone would like me to go back to? Should we put the plan back up for now as a starting point? <laughs> has anything specific, we can jump back and forth. Sounds good. Anybody want to be the, oh, Dana, perfect. Thank you. I was going to ask if anybody wanted to be the first person, but Dana jumped in. That's awesome. Can you delete your, or um, not delete, uh, unmute yourself is where I'm asking. Shauna, is she able to unmute herself? Or do we need to give her that ability? I believe I just gave it to her. Okay, thank you. Dana, are you yeah, able hi. to? Oh, yeah, hi. hi. Hey, Lauren, uh, Deborah, thank you so much. Uh, everything looks great. I have no comment. It is a beautiful opportunity for the park. All of your slides, I'm sure you will be able to select the best options for that park. Uh, so I will leave it up to everybody else. But uh, thank you so much. It's going to be a great, great park. Well, thank you. We're really excited about it. Thanks for joining us tonight and all of your comments. Thank you. Um, Teresa, are you able to unmute? I am so excited. You know, we've been waiting for this for a long time, Lauren. I know you have. Yeah. It is really coming along. Deborah, you are doing a great job. Thank you. I'm just so excited and I am excited with the color, the color is beautiful. And I love the colorful stairs. That's my favorite, it just pops. 
Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks, Teresa. Um, Marcos, I think maybe you had your hand raised next. Are you able to unmute yourself? Yes. <clears throat> thank you. Um, thank you all for, for the great work. I, I did want to bring up a few things that you know, um, they brought up perhaps at the beginning of this process and, and just want to make sure that, um, you know, uh, we keep them in some ways, you know, on, on the forefront to, um, to decide on. I mean, one of the things that uh, I talked about at the beginning was, you know, that this rebuilding was an opportunity to uh, include um, structures or artwork that uh, acknowledged the you know diverse communities in in the four corners area <clears throat> and whether you know it's something that may not be possible uh right away because of the funding i think that it would be great to think about spaces throughout the park where you know if uh, funding is available there could be a statue there could be some other kind of uh you know um <clears throat> built structure that that again just acknowledges that, um, you know, this land, uh, you know, the stewards of the land and, and people who inhabit it now. <clears throat> That's one thought. And then, uh, you know, somewhat on, along those same lines, but certainly out of self-interest is um, the idea of finding, a, uh, well, a couple of things. Uh, we had also talked about um, some form of I wouldn't say canopy, but we did talk about something about the plaza uh, <clears throat> that that would give, you know, partial shade, but mainly again as an art piece almost, right? Um, you know, I think that you know I, I would like to to know you know whether that's something that we can still consider, and along that is, um, you know, there's a, a growing community that. Uh, includes in most of the celebrations uh, the uh, the breaking of, of piñatas, and you know um, I, I I would love to see you know a space that's set up for something like that, either with you know a post put in place or a way to uh, access uh, the installation of a post uh, that again allows for. Uh, some of the communities in our Four Corners area to be able to celebrate, um, you know, their their culture uh, at at the park as well. So, um, just a few thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Marcos. And just to um, jump in on a couple of those to try to help answer some of those, and then Marilyn, I know you um, you had your hand up too. We're, they'll definitely get to that. Don't worry. Um, so, in terms of artwork, that's something that Boston Parks doesn't coordinate. And I think you're right, it might not be as part of this and it might be something down the road, but it would go through the um, Boston Arts Commission. Um, anything that is art in a park has to go through them. So um, like murals and everything still do. So Marcos, I can reach out to you and we can coordinate talking through how that might be able to happen in the future. Um, and then in terms of the canopy, I think that because of the views we were really trying to make sure that we didn't um, block those views. But Deb, do you mind going back to the plaza? Um, I know it's not artwork, Marco, believe me, I know. But um, one of the things that we did was we did try to um, look at how we could get some shade in there, especially around some of the tables. So what we were looking at is this ADA accessible table, which has an off-center um, umbrella which if I remember correctly, Deb, you can get in some fun colors too. Um, yes. That's one of the things that we were looking at is how to introduce some shade into like that, the, the area that's kind of pulled off to the side more towards SnapChef so that we could have some tables that have shade and some that don't. Cause I know like I would sit at the one in the sun and my husband would sit at the one with the umbrella. Um, but what we, um, what we looked at is trying to do something like that. So we trying to introduce some shade but I don't know that we could do an entire shade structure and I'm not sure we'd want to up at the top in terms of blocking views. Um, but, so that's that's just my thought on a couple of those. And I think that the pinata thing is really interesting. So yeah. uh, let us think about that because that is definitely the first I've ever had a request for a pinata post in, in a park, but I think that's lovely. I think it's a great idea. So thank you, Marcos, that's awesome. 
I think it's um, a great idea too. And you know, Marcos, I appreciate that you keep making sure we're we're really paying attention to all these great ideas that we we hear. Um, and I think you know, I think there are plenty of opportunities. You know, even if it doesn't happen with the construction of this park, there is room for things to be done. You know, to the fencing. Um, you know, certainly if there, there's plenty of open space for a sculpture or um, something interpretive. So, um, so thank you for your comments. Absolutely. Marilyn, it looks like your hand is down, but did you still have a comment? Are you able to unmute yourself, Marilyn? No. Shauna, could we double check if, if Marilyn can unmute herself, please? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Awesome. Thank you, Shauna. Thanks, Marilyn. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I guess I had some questions about um, the 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 teen the teen section and what exactly uh -huh. I, I see the table um, and what other ideas did we have for like a, a, a teen section? That's a great question. And it's something that we as the parks department and as designers are being tasked with a lot in our community meetings of finding a teen space. And I think it's something that unlike a playground and unlike a basketball court, right? There really isn't a defined product that is easy to say, like, this is what the teens want to do, right? They really want to sit around and chat, right? So we're trying to come up with what those spaces could be because unlike a playground, like I said, there's nothing that's kind of predetermined for that. Um, so one of the things that we were looking at because it had come up in some of our meetings was, would a table tennis make sense? Um, is that something that people would enjoy, whether it be teens or young adults or, you know, the grandparents that are, you know, hanging out with the kids in the park, right? Um, would that be where the exercise equipment goes? And that's what we were sort of trying to, to get from you guys is, there is that space that we label teen space, but that doesn't have to be a teen space. It could be the exercise equipment. It could be like somebody mentioned, do we do adult swings on the upper terrace? It could be swings. It could be a yoga lawn, right? If people would rather have that up top. So that doesn't have to be teen, but that's part of what we want to talk about is, you know, what goes in that space? What does the community want to see? Like, is, is it better used for exercise equipment and maybe a table tennis, like a combo of those? Um, so, I mean, do you have specific thoughts on it, Marilyn? Well, I had a couple. <laughs> so well, I like that. I do here. like the, um, the table tennis, but I also was thinking about like the, the smaller square tables with the checkerboard, like sort of on the top. And also, um, I thought about like a slab where they might use that for like spoken word, but but not a, not a whole big section, just a, a section sort of over there where it's a slab and it is specifically for them to do like their spoke, just a platform for them to do like spoken word and things like that. Um, I, at the Erie Ellington playground, I, I see like how the uh, the young people are they're, they're always over at the the chess tables, but there's this little round piece that I think is supposed to be something like a platform, but they're always over there and, and I hear them, you know, drop the mic and doing their thing. So I think not something center. You know what I mean? But off to the side, I think that that would be nice to have a slab like that, but then also have those tables um, where they, they can they can play uh, ch checkers and chest and stuff like that. That's great. I love that. And I will be honest, I have not noticed the circular piece that you're talking about at Erie Ellington. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go over there and check that out because I'm really curious about it. But I love that idea. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious in terms of the game tables, um, there are different tops you can get, right? There's like the checkers and chess, but there's also backgammon. I'm mm -hmm. curious if, if people think that backgammon in addition to checkers and chess would be something people are interested in in the neighborhood, just because it's an option. Mm. 
I know my teenager won't touch backgammon, but he'll play <laughs> person chess. <laughs> no, I haven't really seen it many. Uh, I haven't seen that like uh, 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 a viable option for teens. <laughs> I just wanted to check because it it's just, it's there. I haven't installed one anywhere. So, um, well, thank you, Marilyn. I appreciate all of those comments. Um, great, great Todd, um, are, you, are you able to unmute yourself? Maybe not yet. Let's see. What about now? There we go. Oh, there yeah. we go. There you go. Yep, now we can hear you. Thanks, Todd. So the, the other piece that we were talking about, um, and I know Four Corners is going to handle the, the recreational uh, shed, if you will, or box. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You're talking about backgammon. You're talking about pieces. You're talking about ping pong with nets. I, don't, I didn't remember the how the ping pong table was set up, but paddles and balls and, you know, I just think you're, you know, that type of feature is going to, you know, take some managing in the pieces and replacing them and I just think there's there's a lot more to that piece um, where versus having just maybe set up straight up tables and maybe having a, like the, the actual, I don't know, it seems, it seems like a lot to manage versus just a feature that is, um, you know, um, doesn't have any uh, pieces or parts to it. That's all. Thanks, Todd. That's a really good thought. What we've seen a lot at the game tables um, in parks, we usually see them used kind of, well, three different ways, really. We see them just used as a regular table and not used with the game on it in, in any way. Um, we see people bring their own pieces. Um, most of our parks that have these don't have the ability for the storage shed. So especially if there's things like the small pieces, I think that it might be something that, you know, the main streets has things that can be checked out at events, but it wouldn't be an everyday thing and people would bring their own, which is what typically happens. Um, but the other really fun thing that we see happening a lot on the checkers and chess boards is kids that will like pick up acorns um, or kids that will pick up little pieces of leaves and will create their own games on them too when there aren't pieces. Um, but I, I completely hear what you're saying, and it's something that we can um, talk to Marcos about in terms of, um, you know, if there's a concern that he has with that. But I think that, you know, how the community uses that storage will be something that, that definitely is, you know, how, how that's managed will be, you know, something that Marcos will definitely need to kind of think through with his group, too. Um, oh, hang on, sorry, there's something in the waiting room I want to let them in. And then Luma, let me see if I can, are you able to unmute? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, there we go. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say thank you, um, Lauren, for your last comment, um, because I think I was thinking at some point, like Todd as well, like, you know, with the ping pong tables, how would that work? But what I love about the ping pong table is that I don't have a ping pong table at my house. Um, and no matter how much room I get at my house, we, it, it just it wouldn't be approved if you get what I'm saying someone would not approve the ping pong table so I like it because it, it it's a reason to get me out to the park I love having game tables and I love having um but but something that I, I, I don't have at home brings me out to the park and that's what I love about what I've seen so far there are things that it's like well I can go right up the street but um, it's a reason to get outside and get engaged with the community so that's what I love about it even though it does I mean, I have to be better about having a ping pong paddle and ping pong ball. Right, exactly. No, that's a really good point. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it is one of those things that it feels kind of odd. Like when I first started at the parks department, I was like, oh yeah, people take their basketballs to the park. But then there was like street hockey where it's like, we don't put nets in. I'm like, wait, somebody's bringing their own net to the court and now we're putting nets in. Um, but it is, it is really interesting. Um, it's not something I grew up doing, taking things like table tennis things to the park, but I love it. And you're right. It gives people a reason to get out. And I think especially that's what we're thinking with some of the teens too, that, you know, sometimes they just need an excuse to be, you know, doing something fun in the park. So um, Marilyn, yeah, you've got your hand up or is that still up from before? I'm sorry. Oh, hang on. Let me, I may need to have you unmute again. Let's see. Where are you? Why is it going away? 
No, that's not. That's... Okay, can you hear me? Yes, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Trying to do too many things at one time. Yeah, so a, a couple no, of things that I had thought of. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. So a couple of things that I had been thinking about from, from before when we were like trying to, you know, come up with concepts was like the idea of out, outdoor classrooms and, and using like some of the plants, um, you know, like the bushes for like when the kids are walking up from Up Academy or from um, Roxbury Prep or whatever, and they're looking, uh, identifying the different plant species, and then wondering if there could be, or would it make sense to put like fruit trees on the outskirts and what have you? I know Marcos had always talked about having um, orchards like right in the urban communities rather than having to go out to stow or something to do apple picking and things like that. So I was, I was wondering about that. And then the last thing is, um, I, I picture this big gigantic sort of like tic-tac, tic-tac-toe thing that is like on these axles that the kids can just sort of spin to, you know what I mean? Like they touch them to turn them so that they're playing tic-tac-toe. So I just wanted to kind of like just mess up this whole plan and add all this other stuff. <laughs> no, that doesn't mess things up at all. In fact, those kind of tic-tac-toe spinning things are actually a fairly standard um, playground piece. So we can take a look and once we figure it out kind of what the structures are, some of those actually have a panel with that on it that you can add to it. And sometimes there are standalone pieces that you can get to do that too if it doesn't go onto a structure. So that's good to that's good to think about. And then I think um, in terms of the comment about plants, um, interestingly, I just had a conversation in the parks department about um, the use of native plants and native understory plants, especially with some slopes and some other things, um, just this week and talking with our maintenance department about um, picking and choosing and finding some parks to do um, kind of maybe a pilot program of putting some things in. So this is a really um, timely conversation, Marilyn. So I will, um, I'll see what I can do on our end because a lot of times with our maintenance capabilities and the, the amount of staff that we have, um, managing and upkeeping um, understory is challenging, right? And we don't wanna put things in that we can't maintain. Um, so if we're looking at um, putting in something that is potentially um, a pilot with some native plants and some other things, which obviously native plants can also bloom and be beautiful and smell um, lovely and, and be bright and colorful. Um, so let me, we'll report back on that at our fifth meeting when we schedule that. Wonderful. Well, thank you guys all so much. And I do, um, I do just want to check in. Does anybody else have any other thoughts or questions or comments for us? Ooh. I like the, um, the hopscotch comment. Um, one of the things that um, we had talked about with Deb is on that loop kind of path that we've talked about on that lower level. Um, one of the things that's fun to do is if it's like potentially a little trike loop for kids is sometimes painting like a little, um, like a little yellow striped um, dashed line in the middle. So it's sort of like a little roadway um, doing painted graphics on the pathways, something like hopscotch or um, a trike loop is something that we can easily do. So that's really fun that somebody put that um, that in the um, in the chat. Um, Loomis, can you um, unmute yet? Let's see. There it is. There you go. All right, I have an idea. Hopefully this makes sense. Um, but you know, what Marcos and Marilyn have been sharing kind of sparked this idea around learning and, and also thinking about students being aware of their place and how do we promote intellectualism, essentially. And is there a way that somewhere on the park surface, it can reflect um, the stars that are directly above it? Um, so it's just one idea I had. I, I thought about something that would be real cool, um, even if there was a telescope, but just to get students to just think about like, wow, like here is this space, but it opens us up to the whole world or the universe in a way. I think that's really fun. I know that um, we've been working with um, a gentleman named Omo Moses, who lives in Roxbury, who is a mathematician and um, has a company called Math Talks, and he does a lot of math play in 
playgrounds. Um, so I'd be curious if there's like a science kind of equivalent because he because mm -hmm. he has like a lot of graphics that go on the pavement that teach counting and learning and a lot of um, early education math. So I'd be curious when you when you talk about that in terms of the science, if there's something like that. So I think as we're looking at um, potential graphics on the playground surfacing, um, not necessarily the rubber surfacing, but the pavement around it, we can definitely look at adding some educational things to it. And I remember in one of the earlier meetings, someone had mentioned that if we're doing paint on the stairs, like painted interesting patterns, that maybe there's like accounting or a letters or something that goes along with that. Um, so that as you're as you're going up and down the stairs, that's sort of ingraining in kids that, you know, like learning as you see it when you go. So I think that's great to bring that back up. I appreciate that. Those are great ideas. Awesome. Marcos, does that mean you know about the math talk stuff with your comment? That's great. Um, so anybody else, any other thoughts for us? I'm so excited to hear so many positive comments and so many people excited. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah, thanks for showing up tonight. It's been a really great meeting. <laughs> and I'm going to one more time I know I did it at the beginning but I'm going to put my email if I can type it correctly in here real quick while talking um, I'm going to put my email back in the chat and if anyone um, didn't hear about this directly from me um, but heard about it through some other means flyer anything else if you'd like to be on my email list for when we schedule that fifth meeting please feel free to email me and I will make sure to add you to my, to my list as well as everything that the Parks Department sends out. Todd. Yes, Todd, the, um, do you, Deb, could you go back to the schedule? Todd, is this what you're looking? Is this what you're asking about? The summer construction. Yeah. Yep, that's perfect. Okay. okay, perfect. Awesome. And then this will be available both as the PDF presentation but also as the video for anybody who wasn't able to join. So again, remind any friends or neighbors um, they can go to the project website if they are um, interested as well. <laughs>